Oh, Carolyn, snowy, it's snowing in Canada, huh? Well, thank you for sneaking in. That's nice. And Dorothy's in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And All right, Dr. Tom, it looks like we are live everywhere outside of Instagram. It did not connect today, but that's okay. Okay, shall I wait? Uh, no, that's okay. I'll go ahead and record it and do it live later. Okay, okay. Hello, hello. It's uh, four o'clock Pacific, six o'clock Central, and here in Costa Rica, seven o'clock on the East Coast, midnight in Dublin, uh, 1 a.m. in London, and most of Europe, including Poland. Uh, let's see, um, 5.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in New Delhi, 10 o'clock a.m. in Brisbane, 1 p.m. on Wednesday in Auckland, and it's Facebook Live. Uh, hello, hello. It's really great to be with you. Sorry I missed last week. I was um, traveling. I went to Brazil and gave a conference, and some of you have already asked, how was Brazil? Uh, thank you so much. It was really fabulous. There were 1,800 doctors in the audience, and uh, uh, standing room only. It was really great, and I had four hours with them, and um, it was really, it was quite um, rewarding to see the interest and like jaws dropping again and again when you see the science and, and uh, people were very appreciative. And so thank you for asking. And it was really great. It was great. Uh, let's see. Sandra's from Mesa, Arizona. Uh, Mercedes says, love Brazil. I agree. They're just great, great people. Uh, Mercedes is in Merced, California. Carol's in San Antonio. Uh, N.A. is from Brazil. Uh, Michelle's in Dublin, Ohio. Uh, Beverly's in Toronto. And the list goes on and on. Uh, Diane, what, Diane says, hello from London. Hey, Diane, thanks for being here. I know it's late for you. Thank you for staying up. Anne Marie says it's 6 p.m. in Chicago out in 50 degree weather, putting up my holiday lights. I love putting up holiday lights on Thanksgiving weekend. That's when I usually would do it at my mother's house. I'd fly back to Detroit for Thanksgiving dinner. We'd go back and then I'd put up her lights on Friday and Saturday and I miss doing that. And uh, So anyway, hello everyone. Um, I have a request for you. Uh, I'm going to get a little geeky here today I put together a little bit of a presentation on what I consider a really important topic, and that is cardiovascular disease. And at some point, if you like are ready to check out and you're going to like leave, just send me a note saying not quite into or too geeky or whatever it is you want to say, but give me some feedback. And if you stay with me to the end, then I know that you really appreciate this or you're learning from it. And then I might do a little more of this on occasion in the future. Uh, so I'm just gonna do almost like a presentation style, um, sharing my screen with you and um, uh, giving you some information I think it's really important for all of us to know. So the first step is to share screen. So let me find that button. There we are and let's go here and here and we'll go here. And I'm just going to get right to it. And you can put your questions in and we'll put them uh, in an organized way for me so that I can find them easily. So we all know that cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in the world. And it has been for uh, at least the last 50 years, if not longer. But the question I ask, what are you doing to protect yourself today from this? 
this. What do we do on a regular basis? And most of us try to live a clean lifestyle. Uh, uh, and, and I know that I'm speaking to the choir here, but is there anything you can do that has a tremendous bang for the buck? And the answer is yes, there is. And that's why I wanna show you these studies today because I talked a little before about this product CardioTone. And as I looked more and more into the science, which I'm gonna show you today, it was like, wow, everyone should be taking this because this is a number one cause of death and it's not gonna hurt anybody and it's, it may help, it really may help. So let's do case study number one. This is a, at the time, 67 year old male, pretty healthy guy, takes care of himself pretty well. And uh, he happens to be someone that you know. <laughs> and I went to Swiss Mountain Clinic. Marzi and I went to Swiss Mountain Clinic and they poked my finger, put a drop of blood on a slide and put it under a microscope. And uh, it was hooked up to a TV so you, you could see instead of looking through the little lens, you could see it on the television screen. And this is what it showed. This was my blood. And these are red blood cells. That's not supposed to happen. That's called a poker chip formation. You know, like the chips stacked on top of each other. Each one of those little circles should be by itself. And you can see these are all stuck together. They're like glued together. The technical name is a rouleau formation. And this is what causes clots. This is one of the main causes of clots. And clots are what cause heart attacks and strokes. There's two kinds of strokes. One, you break a blood vessel in the brain and you bleed out, that's a stroke. Two, a clot blocks the, blood, the flow inside the blood vessel and you don't get enough blood and uh, you get a stroke from lack of blood. Heart attacks, uh, there are a number of causes for heart attacks. The most common one though, is a clot that blocks your artery. Turns out my father died of such an event. His left descending coronary artery, which is called the widow maker. And uh, uh, he had a massive heart attack at 64. Um, uh, so I have a genetic vulnerability, but this was my blood. And I looked at this and I said, this is not mine. This is somebody else. No, no, Dr. Shears, you saw me put the slot, the drop of blood on the slide and put the slide into the microscope. And here it is. And I said, okay, okay. Now I happen to have with me uh, uh, in my suitcase, um, the uh, cardio tone. It was in, Jim, hi, come here, come here. Uh, Cardiotone was in, we were in our research phases, the beta phase of it, and it wasn't available yet, uh, but it was in the beta stage. Uh, uh, so the usual dosage is one of them if you weigh under, under 100 pounds, and if you weigh more than 100 pounds, one of them twice a day. That's the usual dosage. I took six. I took six of them, and the next day I went back and said, let's do that test again. And they said, oh, doctor, it won't change. I, I know, I know, but let's do the test again. And this was my blood the next day. And that's unheard of. You, you don't see things like that happening, uh, but it did. And that convinced me right away of the value of cardiotone. And I've been really quiet about cardiotone. I haven't really talked too much, but I realized People die, you know, people die from cardiovascular disease. And I want to tell you about this, but I think we have to have Gio come say hello first. Gio, Gio, come here, come here. Yeah, yeah, okay, he's just near. Uh, all right, thanks. <laughs> he's at that age where he knows exactly what he wants and what he doesn't want. So this is what uh, my blood looked like after one day. I took a larger dosage, but uh, when you're at risk, you do whatever it takes. And I was at risk of having a stroke or a heart attack that day. You can't have that kind of rouleau formation. Um, it's just extremely not safe. And I think for me, it's because I fly so much. At the time, I was, I was flying about 150,000 miles a year. Uh, and I suspect that was the trigger that caused it. 
And so the ingredients in cardiotone, I'm going to talk about a couple of them tonight. The first one and the primary one that has the effect that I just showed you is called natokinase. Now we know with this current epidemic, pandemic, that we've been suffering from for the last couple of years, clots are a major, major problem. And whether you followed much of the literature, some people have had severe reactions to the shots that they're receiving, some people, and the reactions have been clots. And the clots have been um, uh, fatal for way too many people within a couple of weeks after a vaccination. Uh, uh, so, uh, Gio wants to say hello. Okay, come here. Oh, yes, like, they're right there. Say hi, hi. Yes, yes. Okay, that's all he needed. And Marcy's going to. Go. Okay, okay. Just one minute. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is a paper that came out uh, uh, about a year and a half ago. And how frequently do these clots occur? And 69% of the patients that they tested that were positive for COVID, 69% of them had um, evidence of clots in their bloodstream when they were positive for COVID. And the risk is that they get these uh, venous thromboembolisms, clots, the geeky term for clots, but that's how frequent it is. And so I'm of the opinion now that anyone that tests positive or anyone that receives a vaccination, you take cardiotone for at least a month, maybe two months. I'll show you the studies that say three months to six months have tremendous benefits, but at least for a couple of months, just to protect yourself so you're not surprised. Now, natokinase is an enzyme inside the food, the Japanese food called natto. And uh, uh, Japanese society, they believe it's a strong contributor to the longevity of the population. And they show that the higher the natto intake, the lower the risk of cardiovascular disease death. The more natto you eat, the less risk of dying from a cardiovascular incident. But natto tastes really terrible. Uh, but these, and it's the enzyme in there that has the cardiovascular benefits. It's anti-atherosclerotic, which means it fights plugging up your pipes. It's anti-lipid, meaning it lowers your cholesterol level. It reduces high blood pressure. It breaks up the fibrin, which is the stickiness that causes the red blood cells to stick together. It breaks up that sticky material uh, it's neuroprotective for your brain. It, bre it breaks up beta amyloid plaque in the brain, and it prevents platelets from sticking together also, not just red blood cells, but platelets. It does all of that. And there's a lot of science. I'm not going to show you all the science. I just picked some bullet points to show you. In this paper, they say daily natokino supplementation was an effective way to suppress the progression of atherosclerosis in patients who already have plaque in their arteries. In this paper, and look at the title of this paper. Now, once again, let me pause for a minute. If you're not interested in this kind of thing, just give me a note before you leave to say, I'm not really interested in the science doc and I'll, you know, I'll tailor myself according to the, the volume of feedback I get as to how I do this in the future but I thought I'd try this to see what, what you think and if you appreciate this, okay? So I'm, this is what I'm gonna do tonight. And you give me your feedback. If you like it, I'll do it maybe once a month. Uh, and the other times will be more interactive. Look at the title. A single dose of natokinase potentiates breaking up clots and preventing clots from forming. And they took 12 healthy young males. They gave them a single dose of natokinase, and then they checked their blood at two hours, four hours, six hours, and eight hours. And they measured the markers for clotting in your blood. Natokinase is a unique natural compound, possesses several key cardiovascular beneficial effects for patients with cardiovascular disease, 
and therefore an ideal drug candidate for the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. It's a promising alternative in the management of cardiovascular disease. The problem, and there, there are many studies that say this, but how come your doctor doesn't know about this? Because the pharmaceutical companies can't make high profit margins and because it's a food, it's an enzyme from food and they can't make high profit margins. So no company is putting the million dollars into marketing that's required to get the message out to teach the doctors about this. So that's our job to try and do, right? So as a result of that single dose for those 12 healthy young people in their 20s, D-dimer concentrations at six and eight hours and blood fibrin, fibrinogen degradation products at four hours elevated significantly. All that means breaking down clots. Within six hours, eight hours, breaking down clots. Factor eight, which, which helps to form clots, declined at four hours and six hours. So less of the mechanism to form new clots. Blood antithrombin concentration, meaning fighting thrombin, fighting these clots, was higher at two hours and four hours after a single dose. In this study, we found that a single dose of natokinase administration enhances fibrinolysis, which means breaking up clots, via cleavage. And what this means is, you know, that sticky stuff that's like threads holding the red blood cells together and holding um, uh, platelets together, all that sticky stuff, it breaks up all those cross-linked fibers that are holding it together. It unties the ropes that are holding your cells together in your bloodstream forming these clots. All drugs currently approved and or under clinical investigation for treatment of breaking up clots function as plasminogen activators. That's one pathway. All the drugs address this one pathway to try and help to uh, break up clots, which leads to degradation of the clots. Okay, so all the drugs do this. Blood thinners, that's what they're talking about. However, natokinase activates multiple pathways, directly or indirectly, not just one. And this is the drawing that they did in this study to show you. And this is really complicated. You don't need to figure any of this stuff out, but this is all of the steps to make clots. Like when, when you cut yourself and you have to stop the bleeding, you need a clot to form to stop the bleeding. All of these different steps are involved in fighting or in producing clots. Now the ones in the black box with the white print, those are the ones that natokinase work with, five different mechanisms. Blood thinners, pharmaceutical blood thinners only do this one down here in the bottom left where you say CTPA. That's the one that blood thinners work on right there. But natokinase works on five different pathways. It's very cool that they've done all this science to show how it works. And the ones that increase to break up clots, break up clots, the ones that decrease to form clots, form clots, natokinase is doing five different pathways and all the changes stayed within normal ranges for every person. So you don't like increase significantly breaking up clots and then you don't have enough clots available. No, you're still in the normal range. You just don't have excess clots. That is what's so cool about this. You, I've never seen that in any pharmaceutical. I haven't seen it. All the changes within normal range. In conclusion, a single dose of natokinase administration appears enhancing fibrinolysis and anticoagulation via, via several different pathways simultaneously. That's very, very cool. And it's safe. Now in this study, in patients with high cholesterol, natokinase treatment for 26 weeks, reduce total cholesterol, reduce the LDL cholesterol, reduce triglycerides, increase HDL, the good guys. So you reduce the total, reduce the bad guys, increase the good guys, decrease triglycerides. Following natokinase treatment for 26 weeks, that's half a year. There was a significant reduction in the carotid arteries, those are the big arteries that go up to your brain. Most people, when they get strokes, it's because a clot, um, a plaque that was in the carotid arteries 
breaks off and it goes up into the brain. And what did they do? They measured this. They measured the amount of plaque in people uh, in the carotid arteries and six months on natokinase, they found a 36% 36 36 reduction in the size of the plaque in the carotid arteries, meaning these natokinase is like Pac-Man. And just gently and continually reducing the amount of plaque in your carotid arteries, and we assume um, other arteries in your body, but this study, they looked at the carotid arteries, and there was an 11% reduction uh, uh, in, in the thickness of the muscles on the inside of the carotid arteries. You know, they get really thick and swollen. And so the, the plaque that's sitting on the inside of the artery, and then the artery swells up, uh, so that it closes down the opening that blood can flow through. So not only was there a reduction of a, a, over a third of the plaque in the carotid arteries, but the swelling in the muscles of the blood vessels themselves went down by 11%. That is very, very cool. Our data suggests that natokinase was a better alternative to statins, a commonly used drug to reduce atherosclerosis and furthermore, natokinase could be a viable alternative therapy for cardiovascular attack and stroke in patients. In addition to its anti-atherosclerotic effects, natokinase or natto extract also has a favorable effect on lipids. Using natokinase or natto extract containing natokinase, studies from various laboratories confirm that natokinase has a hypolipid, meaning lower cholesterol effect, and can significantly reduce the increased triglycerides, total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol in animal models. Oral administration of natokinase for eight weeks resulted in a reduction of both the upper number and the lower number of blood pressure. Usually it's 120 over 80, the upper number and the lower number, uh, and it reduced both numbers by five points and almost three points after eight weeks on natokinase. The results suggested that natokinase could play a role in the prevention and treatment of hypertension. Now, if you're on medication for high blood pressure, you take your medication. Don't be silly. But natokinase over time may reduce your need for the dose of medication that you have. So you work with your doctor, say, look, I'm changing my diet. I'm taking some supplements right now. Would you monitor me? Because I know that if my blood vessels start working better, then my blood pressure is going to go down. And if I take this dose of medication, I could get dizzy when I stand up you know, or pass out from not enough blood because my blood pressure is going down too much because the medication is too high a dose. So could you just monitor me? My goal is to get healthier here. And I want to take my medication at the dose that I need. And every doctor is going to agree to do that as long as you're sounding reasonable and you're sane about it. You aren't being a fanatic saying, I'm not taking any medication anymore. You, you don't do that. But make sure your doctor is monitoring you because your blood pressure is going to go down as you take natokinase and do the lifestyle that we talk about that always happens. Your blood pressure goes down. So if you take the same dose of medication, is going to create low blood pressure. So you want to be working with your doctor. Low dose aspirin is a potent anticoagulant. It's widely used for the prevention of heart attack, stroke, and atherothrombotic diseases. We all know that. Aspirin exerts an antiplatelet effect by this technical pathway. I'm not gonna freak you out by these names, but it's how aspirin works. However, the long-term use of aspirin comes with serious gastrointestinal side effects and bleeding. It causes leaky gut and all of the problems that we've talked about so many times from leaky gut. In a study comparing the antiplatelet effects of natokinase and aspirin, natokinase was shown to display excellent antiplatelet aggregation, meaning the plates don't stick together forming clots, and antithrombotic activities both in the test tube and in the person, inhibiting the same thing that aspirin inhibits. All the above data suggests that nanokinase could be a good candidate without any obvious adverse effects 
for the improvement of blood flow and possibly superior to aspirin. Do you hear what the scientists are saying? It's extremely safe and it might be better than statins. It might be better than blood pressure medication. It might be better than aspirin. And you don't stop any of your medications without the consent of the doctor that prescribed them to you, but you approach them in that rational way that I described and every doctor will work with you. And if they, if they don't, you find a new doctor. Here's a study where they looked at 29,000 people and NATO intake. And they looked to see how many of them, and they had no history of cancer, stroke, or ischemic heart disease. And they found that the highest quartile, they, they divided them into fourths, the lowest amount of NATO intake, the next, the third, and the highest. And the higher the amount of NATO, which is high in NATO kinase, the lower the risk of mortality from cardiovascular disease. And if you were in the highest amount of NATO consumers, it was 25% reduced risk. That's what the 0.75 means. The health risk was 0.75 of death. You were 25% less likely to die early if you were eating in the highest amount of NATO in that quartile. Natokinase has the highest clot dissolving potency among naturally known anticoagulants. Now, listen to what the scientists are saying and then look at the title of this paper. Now I'm moving off of cardiovascular disease. Now we're going into this other topic. Oh, I showed you that one already. Yeah, I showed you that. Oh, am I going backwards here? The highest quartile of NATO intake was significantly associated with a decreased risk of mortality from ischemic stroke. Okay, higher NATO intake was associated with a decreased risk of mortality from total cardiovascular disease. Okay, that other paper was just a little out of place. It's supposed to come after this. So are you willing to dive in, right? I love this slide. And I used it a number of times in Brazil as I show them study after study after study. Are you willing to do something that's safe, according to the scientists? And some people, what they need is before and after testing, beforehand to see, oh, I got a problem here. And then after, six months later, to see, wow, it's really working. Okay, here's that paper. In this study, we aim to investigate whether the inhibition of this virus infection by NATO is caused by NATO kinase. And they found out that NATO kinase possesses the potent degradation activity for this virus, the protein of this virus. And it's also been shown to have anthrosclerotic, lipid lowering, antihypertensive, and all those other effects that we've already talked about. When cells infected with the S protein were incubated with NATO kinase, the S protein dissolved in a dose and time dependent manner, meaning the more dose, the more the protein protein dissolves. And you've heard of this spike protein, and it's the problem with this virus. Yes, it is. It's how it gets into the cell. Patients with high blood pressure and cardiovascular comorbidities can easily get very sick from this virus. We know that. Unfortunately, too many of us have had loved ones that have suffered um, from cardiovascular incidents uh, as a result of this virus or the vaccination of, from the virus for the virus. Due to the emergence of numerous variants of this virus, including strains with mutated vaccine target epitopes, vaccination alone may not completely protect against this infection. Natto kinase and natto extracts have the potential to be developed as a new generation of drug for the prevention and treatment of this virus. Abnormal coagulation characteristics correlate with this virus. We know that. Clots have been, lots of studies have come out with clots. Some of the clots are, they almost look like worms. You know, they're like long inside the blood vessels and they get them out of there. And they're, they're big, long clots, kind of like mine picture, but longer, longer. And uh, here's that drawing once again, that there's five different pathways by which this works, by which natokinase works. And cardiotone has an effect that I'm going to show you on this. 
So my slides are a little out of balance, or a little out of order, I guess. So I, I will show you some more on the natokinase in just a moment. Now I'm gonna to go to pycnogenol, the second ingredient in here, uh, because it is incredibly effective. It's been used since the days of ancient Greeks uh, to reduce inflammation. It's been shown to arrest free radical production induced by amyloid beta, rescuing brain cells from death. Its millennia old reputation is anti-inflammatory, free radical reducing powerhouse. Uh, and it really is effective in helping your brain function better, but also cardiovascular health. It regulates the circulation in blood vessels, reduces mild hypertension, reduces cardiovascular diseases and platelet aggregation. That's the forming of clots. Uh, especially, you know, in this study, they check people uh, for, who are smoking because smoking causes all of that and it reduced all of that in smokers. Okay, we've heard about the spike protein in the virus that plays an important role for attachment to a receptor. A receptor is like a catcher's mitt and the pitcher throws the ball to the catcher. And the way that this virus gets inside your cell, vi viruses don't reproduce, they shed like dandruff, but they only shed inside a cell. They have to get in there inside the cell in order to shed and, and have more virus. They don't shed in the bloodstream. So it's got, got to get inside the cell. And, and the way it gets inside the cell, there's a receptor called the ACE2 receptor. Once again, a catcher's mitt, pitcher throws the ball to the catcher. It's, they sit on the outside of cells facing the bloodstream. And the virus gets in the bloodstream and it's going along and it sees the ACE2 receptor, it goes right in there. And then it, it, that's like turning the doorknob, opening the door and the virus gets inside the cell. This is what the virus looks like. And all of those little things on there are the spike proteins looking for a receptor. If it can grab onto a receptor, then it gets inside the cells. And so here's a drawing. Uh, the virus with its spike proteins are, are in red. The receptor is in blue here. And if the spike protein can lock onto a receptor, it's like a docking station, a space, you know, at the space shuttle going to the space station. They've got to get into the docking station before they can get inside the space station. Natto extract contains a protease, that's an enzyme, that inhibits viral infection through the breakdown of proteins of the virus. What proteins? Our results show that both the SARS-CoV-2 and bovine um, uh, uh, hepatitis virus 1 treated with natto inhibits infection into the cells fully inhibits infection into the cells. This paper just came out last year. Do you understand what they're saying? Fully inhibits infection into the cells. Can they say it any more clearly? Fully inhibits infection into the cells. Excuse me for you know being um, aggressive here, but you got to get this in. You have to let it in that a simple piece of nutrition that is safe, has multiple cardiovascular benefits for protection, but here with this virus that we're exposed to fully inhibits the virus getting into the cell. They couldn't say it any clearer. So there's that drawing, but what ha happens here, so this is another drawing of the virus and the little wrenches are, these are receptors that grab on. And the ones um, that are sitting on the cell here, here's a virus that got into an ACE2 receptor, right? But when you've got natokinase that acts like scissors, it's proteolytic. It breaks up protein of the virus. What protein does it break up? The spike proteins. And you see in this bottom one now, 
what happens is that the spike proteins don't have as many of the um, uh, docking station capabilities. And so they just go through the bloodstream, they get filtered out in the liver, filtered out through the kidney, eliminated in the urine. We showed that the natto extract inhibited infectious ability of both uh, uh, herpes and SARS-CoV-2 to the cells and degraded the receptor binding domain protein of SARS-CoV-2, the docking station. Degrades means breaks it down so it can't lock on to the ACE2 receptor. So in this drawing, you can see uh, the X means, no, nope, you are not going into that ACE2 receptor. So that's the pycnogenol. Pic now, now I'm gonna talk about pycnogenol. Pycnogenol, pine bark extract, and there's a number of different kinds. The most powerful is a French pine bark extract, which is what uh, Cardiotone has. It's at least as effective as post-thrombosis management as compression stockings. So people get these thrombi in their legs and they're given compression stockings for it. Uh, and what they found that pycnogenol is at least as effective as the compression stockings, but the combination of the two of them is far superior. Symptoms were more effectively reduced with the combination of pycnogenol and compression stockings than with the individual regimen alone. And um, uh, there was no tolerability problem in subjects using pycnogenol. They had a much lower incidence of recurrent deep vein thrombosis and post-thrombotic syndrome versus standard management and aspirin. They had much better results with pycnogenol. Once again, it's anti-thrombotic, anti-clot formation. Now, the combined deep vein thrombosis treatment and uh, post-thrombotic syndrome was observed in 14.9% of subjects using standard management and in 12.9% of subjects using aspirin management, but only in 3.6% of those with pycnogenol, meaning four times less people will still have episodes of these post-thrombotic events and deep vein thrombosis when they're on pycnogenol. In this overview of 15 random clinical trials, the effects of Panex Ginseng, this is another product now, I'm just putting one slide in here for this, as alternative and complementary medicine on secondary outcomes such as frequency of angina attacks, duration of angina attacks, ECGs and lipid metabolism, all of those benefits also are enhanced by another ingredient in um, Cardiotone, the Panex Ginseng. And that's this one right there. Many studies showed that it's anti-inflammatory, anti-apoptotic, anti-hypoxic, meaning you get more blood flow into the heart. Uh, it lowers lipids, anticoagulation, pro-angiogenesis, new blood vessels going to the heart. If your some your small blood vessels are blocked up, you make new blood vessels. That's called angiogenesis. And it's got all of these benefits and once again, extremely safe. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. So I've just went through a whirlwind in 40 minutes for you of the slides about some of the ingredients in uh, Cardiotone. Now, the thing about Cardiotone is that it's one of our adaptogenic herb products. And the way adaptogens work is that they help you deal with the stress of life, not just emotional stress, but the kidney stress if you're eating too many lunch meats. You know, the joint stress if you're running miles a day every day and you're pounding your joints in their own flame, that any stress in your body, adaptogens always help to deal with the stress of life. That's their job. And so we've put these adaptogens as the carrier for these potent anti-thrombotic, 
anti-clot things such as natto kinase and pine bark, French pine bark. We like to think of it this way, that you, know, you take a spear, the adaptogens are the spear, and on the point of the spear is the natto kinase and the French pine bark, the pycnogenol, delivering them into the cell so that the anti-stress effect helps your, your cells to relax. If they're too keyed up, they calm down. If they're too low and sluggish, that brings them up a little bit. And then you bring these things in there and the result is you get very powerful uh, benefits. Um, uh, the testimonials that come in on Cardiotone are just jaw dropping, just jaw dropping. Uh, my recommendation, and I've never done this before, you know, but I realized who's going to tell you this? You know, well, you know, we told them about the science and if they want to do it, they will. But I'm going to tell you straight out, I think everyone should be taking Cardiotone. It's as important or more important than taking a multiple vitamin right now. I mean, multiples are important, of course, but there are some life-threatening situations out there that uh, just keep, keep hitting us. And this is protection against those. So I'm going to look here now and see if Anne has a uh, 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 list of questions for if the link is here for the I see there's lots of questions coming in. Thank you so much. Um, uh, oh, Olive Kaiser. Is that Olive that I just see? Your name? I did. Hi, Olive. Uh, and sure enough, Olive, uh, Olive was a patient many years ago with me in Chicago, her and her family. Love Olive and her dedication. She says, I want the science. I know you do. I know you do. So thank you. That's really, it's sweet to see you're here. Thank you, Olive. Uh, wishing holiday greetings to you and your family. Uh, let's see. Susanna says, hello, Dr. Tom from Toronto. I try, never miss any Tuesday. Always very valuable. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm looking, there's the link to the questions so that I can do this in an orderly uh, Gary on Zoom says, will cardiotone reverse hypertension? Well, I showed you the studies, Gary, that it tends to bring it down into normal ranges. There are a lot of tricks, you know, for anything that's going on, the question is always the same. Where is the hypertension coming from? What's the trigger? You know, there's so many different triggers. So you have to be looking at the functional medicine approach at the same time while you're dealing with the acute symptoms. But cardiotone and the studies show, yes, it does reduce hypertension. But if you've got high cadmium levels because you were a cigarette smoker for many years, you quit now, but all that cadmium's in your body, cadmium may be giving you your high blood pressure. You have to check and see where is the high blood pressure coming from, not just how do I put a lid on the pressure cooker so that it doesn't appear to be as bad. I'm not saying anything negative about cardiotone lowering blood pressure, but where's the trigger causing the blood pressure? You also have to be looking for that always. Mercedes is on Zoom and says, what kind of test is the test you did to view your blood? Oh, that was a uh, live cell analysis, L-I-V-E, live cell analysis. Barbara says, would it be helpful to eat natto? <laughs> oh, good luck, good luck. Uh, if you've never tasted natto, it is an acquired taste. It is nasty. And, uh, but it's a good question, Barbara. Uh, 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 there's no question that the food always is uh, of value to include in a protocol. Sometimes you want to take the active ingredients like, you know, one of our recommendations to rebuild a healthy gut is to eat fermented vegetables every day just a tablespoon every day, but eat fermented vegetables. Uh, 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 but it's also good for a few months when you're building a healthy microbiome to take a supplement of probiotics. The fermented vegetables are inoculating you with probiotics, but you know that's to build up over time and to maintain a lifestyle that maintains your microbiome, but it's good to take the supplement. So the same thing here, natto kinase is the active ingredient that's shown to have all of these benefits, but I'm sure there are other benefits that would be included if you're also eating natto, but it is an acquired taste. Um, it's nasty. 
but J the Japanese do it all the time. So I'm sure you can. And there are some restaurants, Japanese restaurants that serve natto. They, they, they don't have any many Westerners that come in for it, but uh, uh, I'm sure you, you can find, if you look around a Japanese restaurant, uh, probably in your town, um, and you'll see there's lots of Japanese that go in there. And that's the kind of place that'll serve natto. Uh, Mercedes also asked a question, Dr. Ruby Jane has brought to light that embalmers have been finding in vaxxed individuals clots that are not blood clots, but some rubbery substance. Is there anything that has been found to dissolve these rubbery clots? I'm not sure, but I, I suspect, and I'm taking cardiotone that, to give natokinase the opportunity to deal with this stuff. Uh, the only thing I know to deal with these kind of uh, clots is the fibrin that's holding them together. And that's what the enzymes deal with. That's what natokinase deals with. Michaels on Facebook says the most bioavailable form being natto fermented soybeans, or is it different? Uh, no, that's probably the most bioavailable form of is natto. It's, it is fermented soybeans. And once again, it'll be more comprehensive than just the enzyme natto kinase. Uh, but for me, I want the potent uh, 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 concentrate that's better than aspirin, better than cholesterol lowering meds, uh, shown to be safe. I want to include that in my protocol, but I would never argue with anyone that also wants to include eating the food. That's always a great idea, always. Uh, Brandy's on Facebook and says, can cardiotone be taken with Eliquis? I don't know what Eliquis is, Brandy, sorry. My husband doesn't have the thing, but works around many who do. He was just hospitalized for two days with a pulmonary embolism and multiple clots in his left leg. Any advice on what direction to go with this would be greatly appreciated. Does not want to stay on this dangerous medication. Okay, uh, thank you. Absolutely. Um, if it were me, I would be taking uh, Cardiotone. That would be the number one go-to product. Any of my friends with cardiovascular incidents and clotting, uh, they say, Tom, what do I need to do? The first thing I tell them, get Cardiotone immediately. Have it FedEx to you uh, next day pay the extra shipping and get on it immediately. Um, so yes, um, I, th and there are no known complications or um, uh, uh, interactions with medications that have been listed in any of the articles that I've read. Lydia asks, better than lumbrokinase? Yes, natokinase was compared to lumbrokinase and to, um, uh, Serapeptidase and natokinase had, um, they're all three are great, but natokinase had the highest level of clot dissolving um, ability. Marin on Zoom says, what if someone is on a baby aspirin every other day, should they stop and take cardio instead? I would want, I'll, I'll never tell you to take, uh, to stop medication that your doctor has told you to take. I'll never tell you that, but I would want a marker as to a blood marker, as to what's my clotting capabilities right now. Uh, I'd wanna see what the benefits of the aspirin is, what's it doing right now. Then I would get on Cardiotone. I'd do it for probably a month would be enough time, although one dose will do it, uh, probably a month to be safe. And then I go back and do the same test again. And if you see it's better with the natto kinase, then I personally would stop the aspirin because it's causing leaky gut. A single dose gives you leaky gut. I personally would stop it. And then another month down the road, I'd retest one more time to make sure that I was still getting the benefits and nothing had slipped by. That's the way that I would look at it for myself. I can't give you personal recommendations because I don't know your situation. I'm not your doctor, but that's what I would do myself. Uh, Kat on Facebook says, are the soybeans organic or fermented? Uh, yes, they're fermented and yes, they're organic. Uh, uh, our natto kinase is an organic natto kinase. Marin says, uh, what if someone's on a baby? Oh, that, that, we did that one already. Uh, Patrice asks, wonder how it affects fatty liver. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent benefit for fatty liver. Reduces triglycerides, which is a primary cause of fatty liver. 
uh, reduces uh, LDL cholesterol if it's too high. It's an excellent um, uh, approach to dealing with fatty liver. Not complete by itself, but an excellent component. Carolyn on Zoom says, my MS medication causes me to have high cholesterol. Would nanokinase work for me too? Yes. I don't want to go on stats. I understand. Uh, uh, of course, diet's critically important, and uh, there are many contributors that might be involved, but no known complications, Carolyn, to uh, including uh, cardiotone in your protocol. Dr. Sue on Zoom says, what's the best form product and dose of natokinase? The very best that I know of is uh, cardiotone. Um, it's extremely effective. We're really happy with the results we're getting. Uh, and that the testimonials come in continually that are uh, just jaw-dropping sometimes to hear. Uh, Marilyn on Zoom asks, if you have low blood pressure, is it safe to take natokinase? Yes. It does not lower your blood pressure. It lowers high blood pressure. It brings you into the normal range. That's its job. Kim's on Facebook, is the virus shedding the same as a shedding from vaccines? Um, I don't know what the shedding of vaccines is. So I, I'm sorry, I can't answer that one. I, I just don't understand that. Uh, Jane's on Zoom. What's the dose of natokinase in your supplement? 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams, or what? We are able to lower the dose uh, to 50 as a result of all of the supportive uh, adaptogens that are in it and getting the benefits that we want. Dr. Susan Zoom, what are the side effects of cardiotone uh, um, arid? And what is the black ant extract? How, uh, there are no side effects to cardiotone that I know of. And the black ant, black ant extract is called the king's herb, that it is incredibly effective to increasing energy production at the cellular level. It's not a stimulant, but, um, and I suspect what's happening, I don't know this, but I suspect what's happening is that it's increasing mitophagy, which is autophagy of the mitochondria. And when you increase mitophagy, you're building new furnaces inside your cells, generating energy. Black ant, black ant extract is world famous uh, for its energy and vitality producing not artificial stimulant energy, like three cups of coffee, but core energy. How is the cardiotone manufactured regarding the safety and purity? Um, uh, full, um, uh, the lab is CLIA applied. There have been two visits so far, everything's approved. Uh, there's one more visit yet to come to get CLIA certification, but it's squeaky clean. I'm very proud to see this lab where it's being produced. Uh, would like to recommend this product, but need more info for safety. Of course, of course. Uh, Mercedes says, I cannot take green tea or caffeine as I get heart palpitations. And may end up, there's no caffeine uh, in this. Th this is the polyphenols, not, not the caffeine uh, from the green tea extract. Does the high concentrate green tea extract have caffeine? No. If yes, is there another supplement that has all the ingredients of cardiotone except for the high concentrate green tea extract? No. Uh, it doesn't have caffeine. Sue, what if you've always had low blood pressure? Could definitely use the cardio benefits for the heart. Yeah, it's not a problem. It doesn't lower low blood pressure. It lowers high blood pressure. Uh, Kathleen, might this be effective for PMR, polymyalgia rheumatica? Absolutely. Absolutely. Crystal on Zoom, is it safe to take nanokinase if you have low blood pressure? Yes. Mario on Zoom, is it possible to inter eight natto, uh, uh, inter eight natto with the anticoagulation meds? Oh, I think you mean interact. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, once again, I would do a test. You're on anticoagulation meds, do a test right now. See how your coagulation factors are. Start cardiotone 30 days, do another test. Oh, look, you're better. Then talk to your doctor about weaning down or off the, the uh, blood thinners. And then 30 days later, do another test to see. And uh, that's the way that you can be confident that what you're doing is working and safe. 
I would not hesitate to do it, but for any of my patients, that's the way I'd recommend they do it so that they uh, can feel confident and safe. Uh, Michael says, but he'll take booster after booster. Will this reverse negative effects from the vax? Don't know, don't know. We know that it minimizes some of the complications. I don't know that it's gonna reduce the negative effects of the vaccines. Can cardiotone be taken upon positive testing for COVID to reduce, eliminate symptoms, complicate? Yes. Or is it best to be taken as prophylaxis? Both. It's not one or the other. Uh, Marzi takes, I've Marzi taking one a day now uh, because of its protective benefits. Have there been long-term effects, long-term studies on the effect of natto on muscle mass, which is created with, pro yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, natto is extremely safe. Uh, no complications whatsoever that I've read anything about. Could natokinase cause bleeding problems? No, not that I know of. That was from Lorenzo. Ellen's on Zoom. Will this help if you have some heart calcification? Yes, the study on the calcification of the carotid arteries and the reduced the, the plaque by over 30% and reduced the swelling in the muscles themselves so the muscles relaxed by 11%. And it's not target specific to the carotid arteries. That's just the easy ones to measure. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming um, that every blood vessel in your body is gonna benefit from this. Uh, we have had testimonials about men's erections are coming back, which is blood vessel uh, um, competency. So I would assume that would be the case uh, across the board. Uh, anonymous on Zoom. I may have missed it for someone not on blood thinning medications. What are the recommended doses for natokinase for someone with active COVID infection? Well, one per day if you weigh under 100 pounds, one twice a day if you weigh over 100 pounds. And I took six in one day when I had a problem. So if you are active COVID infection, I would take four, four to six uh, for a few days. Very safe, no complications whatsoever. Uh, I personally take two a day, uh, uh, but I don't have any symptoms of an infection. If I had a viral infection, I would take six or eight a day until, uh, and, and, until it's better, and then for a few days afterwards. Then I, then I would go back down to my um, dose of two a day. Mary Beth on Facebook, I've been taking Keppra to reduce my seizures. Will the NK or other product uh, uh, will with this. I think you mean uh, work with this. And the answer is yes. I've not seen any studies of complications uh, from any medication. And with your seizures, Mary Beth, I'd suggest you do the wheat zoomer test. Just do the test. You're going to find out if wheat's a problem for you. And then Google gluten and seizures. Here come the studies that if your immune system is fighting gluten or fighting wheat and your genetic vulnerability is to seizures, you go gluten-free, your seizures go away. I've got, I don't know, five, six studies in my all-day course on seizures and wheat-related disorders. And I showed the MRIs with the lesions in the brain and a year or two years later, the lesions are gone and all the seizures are gone. You know, so uh, that doesn't happen for everyone, but symptomatically they're better. And for some, the lesions go away in their brain. Lori on Facebook, natokinase and cardiotone. Yes, it's a, it's a number one ingredient in cardiotone. Carla's on YouTube, is mitral and tricuspid regurgitation dangerous? Yeah, of course. And how do I stop it from progressing? You have to look at, you need a full functional medicine approach as to uh, 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 where is it coming from? What's causing the uh, 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 symptoms that you're having? Uh, uh, your heart muscle is weakened or the, the valves aren't working very well. Usually there's associated weakness of the musculature too. And you know, sometimes, I mean, it's a gluten sensitivity. I don't mean to be fanatical about that, but you just read the papers from Mayo Clinic on reversing cardiomyopathy on a gluten-free diet and increasing ejection fraction, meaning your valves are working better, 
uh, on a gluten-free diet. So you just have to check and see what's the cause here? Where is it coming from? And unfortunately, most of our doctors today, um, they're very, very well trained on the acute symptom that you come in with. You have uh, 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 mitral or tricuspid valve regurgitation. They know what to do to help you function better, but they don't have a clue as to how to investigate for the trigger that wasn't in their training. You have to look and see where is the, uh, is there inflammation right now? And then where is the fuel on the fire that's causing that inflammation? Um, I'm, oh, Colin's here. I see Colin. Hang on a minute. Let me see what you got to say there, Colin. Uh, in, in Bridlington, UK, sadly, it did not show a notification. So just seeing it's live, we'll watch later. All right, well, Colin, um, it's recorded as you know, and so uh, it's 1 a.m. I think for you. So thank you for staying up to be with us on this one. Uh, Mary Beth says, I've been off gluten for a long time, so I don't think that is a problem. Mary Beth, do the wheat zoomer. You're gonna be extremely surprised. I just spent four hours on stage in Brazil this last weekend showing them study after study after study of meticulously gluten-free people who still are getting exposed to gluten unknowingly. Uh, I'll, I'll take the moment to tell you this study. Uh, at Celiac Research Center at Columbia, one of the really good research centers for celiac disease, they took 804 people, they hired 804 people, they gave each of them testing equipment and said, go out into the community, go to a gluten-free restaurant and order seven things off of the menu and test it right there at the table. Is it gluten-free or not? And the equipment's called a NEMA and you put a cartridge into the testing equipment, you put a little food in the cartridge and then you just turn a button and in a minute to two minutes, it says yes or no, that it's got 20 parts per million or more of gluten in it. So they did that, 804 people, seven foods, 5,624 different foods ordered off of a gluten-free menu. 32% of everything was not gluten-free, ordered off a gluten-free menu. It's like, what? One third of everything on a gluten-free menu is not gluten-free? Yes. Well, how could that be? It's contamination from somewhere, the manufacturing, the kitchen, the chef that's stirring the pot of gluten-free pasta is now using the same spoon that stirred the pot of uh, regular pasta. Who knows where the contamination is coming from? That's why you need Wheat Rescue or E3 Advanced Plus. Every person that needs to be gluten-free to calm down their immune system needs to take Wheat Rescue. We'll put the links here for Wheat Rescue or E3 Advanced Plus, every time you eat anything that you're not absolutely positive is gluten-free, meaning you didn't make it yourself. But even, you know, Marzi made gluten-free uh, spaghetti for lunch today. You know, in Geo takes spaghetti, takes one spaghetti and put it, sucks it up like that. It's so great to watch them. But we, we took our wheat rescue because, you know, you buy a package of gluten-free pasta, it's not gluten-free. 50% of the time, the pasta, 50.8% of the time, the pasta is not gluten-free. 53% of the time, gluten-free pizza is not gluten-free. That's what we're up against. So which one do you take, wheat rescue or E3 Advanced Plus? We take both, but... E3 Advanced Plus has bacteriophages in them that kill bad bacteria. So if you've got gut symptoms with your gluten sensitivity, you take E3 Advanced Plus because you probably have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you know, too much of the bad guys in there. And the bacteriophages in the E3 will deal with that. And the enzymes in the E3 will break down the gluten. Uh, and if you don't have gut symptoms, if you get brain symptoms or fatigue or no symptoms, whatever, you take Wheat Rescue because Wheat Rescue has more digestive power. E3 has um, enough digestive power to break down 99% of any exposure to gluten. Plus you've got the bacteriophages. 
So that's the difference between the two. Uh, let's see. Oh, I'm five minutes over the hour. Uh, so this was an episode where I did a lot more science. Please take a moment and just give me a little feedback here. And we'll look through all of this, you know, all of your comments and see, shall I do this once a month? And Anne will have the numbers, how many people were here at the beginning and how many people are here at the end. So if you're here at the end, then I'm assuming you're good with this kind of approach, but I need to see how many people dropped off. You know, if we lost 70% of the people because it's too geeky, then, you know, that's not my purpose here is to be a geek show. You know, my purpose is to speak to you in language that you can resonate with that empowers you to go out and take care of yourself and your family. All right, everyone, just want to say hi to Gracie. Hey, Gracie. Nice. I, I, I hope you're out there. I didn't get a chance to see if you're here or not, but uh, I'm assuming you are. Uh, bless you. And all right, everyone, thank you so much. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.